visitors you think we had tonight? Um, I, the one count that I had was uh, about a dozen. Okay. Unless I missed somebody, yeah. so uh, that was a good night. Yeah, well, was I was night. sitting towards the front, and I could see people coming in even after it had started, so that right. was really good. We'll take visitors on the last night, even if that's, that's you right. know, when we can get them. That's right. But we'll, now you've missed the tent, so. Yeah. Caleb, I tell you, I, I, I'm afraid a lot of people, uh, I think it's ingrained in people to procrastinate, you know, and, you know, the Bible eventually is going to say, you know, too late. Right. You know, you waited too long. The mm -hmm. Matthew 25, the parable of the foolish virgins, you know, they waited too long, didn't get enough oil, and when the bridegroom came, they were shut outside. I right. hope people don't wait too long to obey the gospel and get a chance to hear the gospel. Yeah. And once the door's shut, it doesn't open. That's right. But luckily for the community, we'll be back. We'll have more tents to come, so we still want you to come visit with us. We're glad people got to come out tonight. But what we are talking about this evening is going to be touching on the same things that we discussed last night. Last night, we, uh, Mark and I discussed miracles. We were getting into mainly tongue speaking because that's really just a big issue that's in the community. Everybody wants to speak in tongues. But tonight, what we're going to try to look at, and we're going to use the Bible, and use the Bible only, we're going to establish, and we've got to establish this in the world of religion if we hope to get any ground covered, what is a miracle? When you ask yourself, what is a miracle, and you, you hear people today talking about all the things that take place in life, you know, this, this was a miracle, this happened to me the other day, and it was a miracle. Well, if you look at miracles in the Bible, I mean, when someone tells me a miracle, James, I think, you know, how do I know that's really a miracle? Right. How, do, how do I know they're not just coming up with that? Well, a miracle in the Bible is something that supersedes natural law that could only be done by God. And we're going to look at several examples tonight through the Bible and see when if you saw a miracle today, there'd be no doubt what we would be seeing would be a miracle. Right. Uh, one instance that I talked about last night with Mark going to the Carter County Jail up in Bristol, one of the ladies said, you're not, she said, you're not going to tell me my mother didn't speak in tongues. Well, another lady said, you know, she said, I believe the miracles will still happen today. You're not going to tell me they're not. She said, my son just had 19 brain surgeries, and on the last one, she said, the doctor said God pulled him out of it. Now, what's the problem there? <laughs> well, what, what happened the other 18 times? Right. <laughs> yeah. If it was a miracle, there wouldn't have been the 18 before the 19. Right. And, and you know, it would have been something immediately. He would have got up. That's how it was done in the Bible. But we've got to establish what a miracle is because we can't just continue saying, you know, a miracle is just, you know, everything's a miracle. We can't just continue doing that. We've got to establish by the Bible what a miracle is going to be. Well, how about Balaam's donkey? Okay. I mean, when's the last time any of us today had an animal speak to us where, you know, if someone was in their right mind at least and an animal spoke to them or if it wasn't on TV. But in Numbers chapter 22, you see this account, and you see, uh, starting where I have in verse 28, And the Lord opened the mouth of the ass, and she said unto Balaam, What have I done to thee that thou hast smitten me these three times? And if you go, or before this, uh, verse 28, you see where there had been an angel of the Lord, an angel of the Lord for, uh, prohibiting their, their travel, and the donkey wanted to avoid it. And so it just kept moving away, and Balaam would beat it, and beat the donkey, and then it the donkey opens his mouth and he speaks to him. Now, the reaction of the actual verses, if you go down to verse 29, uh, when it says, What have I done unto thee that thou hast smitten me these three times? And Balaam said unto the ass, Because thou hast mocked me, I would there that there were a sword in mine hand. Uh, sure for, now, for now would I kill thee. Well, Balaam just, you know, talks to the donkey like it's nothing. You know, this is... <laughs> I don't know if he had talked to any donkeys before this time, but I've never done that in my lifetime, and I've never heard anyone else saying that. Right. But we know donkeys don't speak. We know that animals don't just open their mouth and say, why are you beating me? It's above natural law. And for today, for someone to come in and just say, well, I know in my mind there was proof in this. Right. I mean, there was absolute proof that, you know, when Balaam's donkey started speaking to him, uh, even he just started speaking back. I mean, even he would have had to realize this is an act of God. Right. Because a donkey doesn't just speak, just open its mouth and, and start speaking, asking it questions, and you carry on a conversation with your donkey. You know, there's actual proof in these miracles. They're supernatural. Our next example, what about Hezekiah's sundial going back 10 degrees? 
2 Kings uh, chapter 20 and verse 10, or let's go back just a little bit. Okay. Uh, and Isaiah, and Hezekiah said unto Isaiah, What shall be the sign that the Lord will heal me? And that I shall go up into the house of the Lord the third day. Sorry about that. And Hezekiah answered, It is a light thing for the shadow to go down 10 degrees, so it's nothing if the shadow on a sundial just continues 10 degrees as it would in normal time, the way a, a sundial would work. Right. You know, that's just normal time moving by. It's nothing to go 10 degrees. Well, let's make it go backwards. Shadow go down 10 degrees, nay, but let the shadow return backward 10 degrees. So now what's happening here where it says the, back, the, the sundial is turning backwards 10 degrees. And after it does that, and Isaiah the prophet cried unto the Lord, and he brought the shadow 10 degrees backwards by which it had gone down in the, di in the dial of Ahaz. This is basically time going backwards. You know, when, again, when's the last time you, you talked to a donkey or any animal? When's the last time it just spoke right up to you and you had a conversation to it? When is the last time that you saw the sun go back 10 degrees, your shadow? You know, imagine you right. stand outside and your shadow's here and suddenly it's going back the other way. When's the last time that's been experienced on Earth? It's above natural law. But people just aren't seeing it. We're, we're getting into things that are, you know, just ideas. I just, I can't think of anything other besides that lady saying uh, that she had the, the son with 19 brain surgeries. But these are things that go so far beyond natural law. I mean, you don't just see the sun start moving in the daytime to just, just like that. Another thing too, Caleb, it, what reminds me is most people when they talk about uh, miracles, it's always something that, that really can't be seen. Right. You know, I was talking to a guy the other day, we had a Bible study after our door knocking and, uh, uh, you know, he's talking about, well, you know, I, I know, you know, someone was, was healed of their cancer. Mm -hmm. you know, well, you know, it's always something yeah. on the inside. Is that, why don't we restore a hand or why don't we, like you said, see, see the sun go turn backward mm -hmm. 10 degrees. Right. Something, you know, tangible that you, act, you can actually see is what they did in, in the New Testament, right. in, the, in the Bible times, mm -hmm. not even the New Testament, but, you know, so miracles are these, you know, undisputable things. Right. Undeniable exactly. things. And, and also, you know, this, right after he said, you know, what will be assigned to you? Well, it's nothing that it goes forward 10 degrees. Let it go backwards 10 degrees. And then it says, Isaiah cried unto the Lord, and then it happened. You know, after he cried unto the Lord and it's supposed to take place, uh, the prophet cried unto the Lord, and he brought the shadow 10 degrees backwards. There was no waiting period. You know, right. let's... let's Let's just imagine they say, well, we waited till the next day right. from what time it was. Well, it was 10 degrees back from what it was yesterday. It didn't yeah. work that way. Right. It was instant. Same way with Balaam's donkey. He was beating the donkey and it opened its mouth right up. These are things that are going above natural law. Just as James said, they're not, you know, uh, we have a video that maybe we'll get to. It's a bit long, uh, but maybe we'll get to it later where a lady was saying that her, her preacher healed her, but she later went to the doctor anyways. Again, one of those cancer situations where she said, I have cancer. And my preacher healed me, but I still went to the doctor. Right. And so if you're getting healed, just as you said, if it were in the New Testament time, there's no going to the doctor after that. Yeah. In the Bible, they actually went to the doctor first. You right. know, the one with the issue right. of blood. She, went, she spent all of her money going to the doctor. And then when they couldn't help her, then she went to Jesus, mm -hmm. and that was, that's when she was healed. So mm -hmm. people today do it just backwards. Right, exactly. What, what happens in the Bible. And even with that idea, you know, if they say, some people may say, I know one of, uh, Scott Gann, he told me a story about having crutches and a man healed him in the store, healed him. And he said, well, it may take weeks, it may take months. You may have to go to the doctor. When did an apostle ever say, now yeah. you may have to go to the doctor? Right. You never heard that. Well, if the sun itself moving back 10 degrees on a sundial isn't enough for you, what about turning from about 108 to 162 gallons of water into wine? And in John chapter 2, verses 6 through 9, it says, And there were set there six water pots of stone, after the manner of the purifying of the Jews, containing two or three perkins apiece. Now, James, uh, a perkin is about nine gallons, isn't it? I think so. So if you take six water pots that will hold about two or three, you know, nine gallons, so two or three perkins, so you're looking at either 18 or 27 gallons in one of these water pots. Uh, uh, let's see, we stopped at two or three firkins apiece. Jesus saith unto them, Fill the water pots with water, 
And they filled them up to the brim, and he saith unto them, Draw out now, and bear unto the governor of the feast, and they bear it. When the rule of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine, and knew not whence it was. So here, the ruler didn't even know that it had once been water. Right. You, know, you take something, and I don't know about all the different you know, molecules <laughs> of water and, and you know, what would be grape juice. I don't know all the differences, but I know you can't just pour water into water pots, and then just boom, it's, it's grape juice. Right. These are above natural laws. So why, if we have all the pastors today, why aren't we getting more signs like this? Right. You know, where are they? Where's, uh, you know, everyone wants to speak in tongues, which is what we were talking about last night, but I'd rather see someone healed. You know, uh, all the different ailments. My dad, <clears throat> my dad had cancer. You know, he came into my room one day and just, he said, well, they, they say I'm, I'm sick. They say mm -hmm. uh, I've got cancer. And I just, I remember still just to this day just thinking it didn't really, you know, I didn't comprehend it. I just, he came into my room, said I was sick, and he walked out. Why didn't somebody heal him? I know a lot of people say they don't like him, but come on. If you've got the ability, yeah. then heal him. What better way to, to demonstrate, uh, you know, the, the error that we're saying by, by healing the enemy of what mm -hmm. you're saying, the enemy of truth, you know, uh, in, in, in Romans 12, uh, 19 to 20, you know, do good to all, or as much as life then you live peace with all men, and then, you know, if, you're, if your enemy, you know, heap coals of fire on their head, what right. better way to demonstrate uh, a, a greater sense of love or whatever than to, than actually to heal someone that, you know, that you consider the enemy or maybe an opponent of what you're right. teaching. Exactly. Um, and I think too, Caleb, you know, under the tent tonight, you, we actually had a number of people that could use some healing. I mean, we had there's there's one gentleman that that's a member of the church. You know, he's legally blind. Mm -hmm. uh, there's another. Uh, he's a member of the church in Danville. There's a, another lady from the church in in Martinsville. She just got back to the doctor. She's got problems with her feet. You right. know, mm -hmm. and uh, a number of other individuals that you know have have other kinds of of, of health issues and problems that you know that'd been a great time to come down and say you know what hey let's 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 just yeah. demonstrate to mm -hmm. all you non-believers here that. Hey, you know the power really is does exist right. today, but never happens. And, you know, and we've been doing this for several years now, and we still haven't got a you know a real answer to it. Like you said, uh, you know, if we're we're opposing what they're teaching, and they say it's true, then come show us. And right. even not that, uh, you know, not if you're you know not going to show us at least, you know, at least defend what you're teaching. You know, mm -hmm. Paul in Romans one sixteen said, "For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ." Are you ashamed of what you know what you're teaching? Right. Are you won't even speak to us about it. But he, he turned about 108 to 162 gallons of water into wine. Again, above natural law. That's what we've got to establish, friends. Above natural law is what a miracle is. You know, it can't be feelings anymore. It can't, can't just be, I, I think, or, you know, the doctor said, and just for the instance of a doctor, what is, I'm sick, you know, just for my dad example and the, and the man that had 19 brain surgeries, I'm sick, I go to the hospital. They operate on me. They give me medicine. I go home. Those are all natural means. You've got men operating on you, and they give you natural medicine. Right. At no point, I mean, is there someone just coming in, and, and the way they would have done it in, in the Old Testament, you know, where Jesus would put his hands on people, the apostles, I mean, someone even touching the hem of Christ's garment. Right. I mean, there's none of that involved in right. there. Right. But it has to be above natural law. And I couldn't fit most of uh, John 5 in, James, so if you All could right. bring that up for us. Uh, and John 5, the healing of the lame man. Now here is, when we get into the lame man, there's going to be something that really is important in this, and it's just something that you can't get past today with so-called faith healers. Uh, starting in John 5, it says, now there is at Jerusalem, uh, oh, sorry. Uh, after this were the feast, <laughs> well, let's say we'll get it eventually. All right, we'll start in verse 1. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, at, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem. Uh, we've got a, the TV that we're using is just a bit of a delay, and I don't know why I've got this Bible in my hands. I guess right. I'll read it. Uh, now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called the Hebrew tongue, Bethsaida, having five porches, and these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of water. For an angel went down into a certain season into the pool and troubled the water, where whosoever then first, after the troubling of the water stepped in, was made whole, whatsoever disease he had. He had. 
And a certain man was there which had an infirmity thirty and eight years. Now that's the first point we want to make. Thirty and eight years this man had an infirmity. Now, if he's lame, uh, you know, he, he can't get around on his own. Don't you think people in this area would have noticed a man thirty eight years being you, immovable? You know there you know there's people who know individuals who have been lame for thirty eight years mm -hmm. or from their from their birth or right. you know from the mother's womb, like Acts 4, I mean, mm -hmm. countless uh, examples of that. Everybody knows somebody who's yeah. had some kind of disease or some kind of uh, misfortune early on in life, so there's all kinds of these people around. Yeah, I mean, just even in communities, you just drive your car around, you may see certain individuals, there's so-and-so. Mm -hmm. You notice people in your communities, they would have noticed this man for 38 right. years, immovable. Uh, starting back in verse 6, when Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he said unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? And the impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another steppeth down before me. And Jesus saith unto him, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. And immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked on the same day with the Sabbath. Now, not only has he been there for 38 years, people would have known it. It would have been recognized a miracle not only did it happen immediately, there was no, okay, I put my hand on you, go to the doctor. Put my hand on you, take some medicine. If you have been immovable for 38 years, you don't have any type of muscle, you know, memory, so right. to speak. You don't have any, uh, any built-up strength <clears throat> at all. I mean, all of your ligaments, your joints, your muscles would have just been weak. Right. But what happens to this man? Immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked on the same day was the Sabbath. That's a good. That's a good point, Caleb. I, I'm when I was in high school, I actually cut my leg with a chainsaw right right above my knee, mm -hmm. almost to my kneecap, and I had to I had stitches in it, but I had to wear a brace that kept my leg straight. I could not bend my left leg, mm -hmm. and uh, for I don't know how long it was. It was at least a couple of weeks anyway. And even that short period of time, I mean, it was it was painful because you want to bend your leg. You know, if your leg's immovable. Right. Uh, immobile and uh, but when I when I finally got it off the first thing I did I almost fell because my leg would not it didn't know yeah. how to work you know I had it to learn how to so walk long. again mm -hmm. in just that short period of time so again 38 years uh, yeah you have no no leg muscles right. or whatsoever yeah but somehow immediately again these things are above natural law and that's what we got to establish friends above natural law immediately he got up there was no waiting period uh, the lady that we talked to who went to the doctor, this man didn't have to go to the doctor anymore. He actually went later and told people that Jesus had done it. Uh, and even those that were standing by, the Jews therefore said unto him that was cured, It is a Sabbath day, it is not lawful for thee to carry thy bed. Well, they acknowledged that this man had been, <laughs> had been uh, lame for 38 years, and they say, well, now he's up walking around, but what do they say to him? It's a Sabbath, you're not supposed to be carrying your bed. They acknowledged the miracle, they just didn't want to give credit to who right. was doing it. Uh, even it's kind of like Balaam and the donkey, you know. Let's, let's don't even worry about the obvious. You yeah. know, let's just talk about, you know, well, you crushed my foot against the wall, yeah. so I'm going to beat you. Right. You're talking to a donkey, mm -hmm. you know. All right, here's a lame man, 38 years, rise up, walk, well, you're, you're walking on the Sabbath day. Right. Hello, yeah, you know, I just got was, up and walked around. If it was a miracle, it would be right in our face, wouldn't it? Yeah. But we're not seeing it today, and I'd love to see one, all the people that say they could do it. I mean, there's so many horrible, sad things that are happening around us today, and no miracles. Well, Caleb, I think, I think if these people who claim to do miracles actually saw a miracle, it would scare them to death. Mm -hmm. You know, to actually see one, you know, that they, when and here they're pretending, but then to actually see one, mm -hmm. I mean, I think that's why in Acts 8, and I'm not trying to take you off what you're saying here, but, but in Acts 8, you know, here you have Simon the sorcerer, and he bewitched the people pretending that he was some great person. Right. When he actually saw the real thing, you know, he's like, you know, hey, you know, that's the real thing. Right, you know, exactly. you can't con a con. You know, he, mm -hmm. he knows, you know, he knows the real thing. So, yeah, uh, yeah these people would be, I think they'd be scared to death mm -hmm. if they actually saw it demonstrated. Right. And same idea, uh, I just was talking about it with someone the other day, uh, Pharaoh's magicians. You know, they were able to do some things that Mo uh, Moses could do, like turning his rod into a serpent, but once it got... Bigger than that, they just told uh, Pharaoh, we can't do that. Mm -hmm. You know, this is the hand of God, yeah. is what they said. Right. It's so obvious, friends, don't let these people fool you. Don't let them say, oh, it's a miracle, I know it's a miracle. 
I can, you know, shout about something all day long. I'll tell you your jacket's red, but it doesn't make it red. Right. And, you know, I call it, they call it a miracle, but it's not going to be a miracle because it's still something that's taking place within natural laws that God has set in place. And until we see something that goes above and beyond that absolutely just breaks natural law, it's not a miracle. Right. And that's how it was in the Bible. <clears throat> Healing the lame man, it was immediate. I mean, it was obvious to the people. There was no getting by it. Well, going back to what we talked about last night, how about speaking in 16 different languages that you haven't even learned? These are 16 different languages in Acts 2. There's at least 16 different groups of people uh, at Pentecost, at, the, at Jerusalem for the Pentecostal feast, and you see this. There's you know, this large group of people, but who was doing the speaking in tongues there? Galileans. Right. People that they would have known uh, hadn't, learn these languages. And so, if we read from Acts 2, uh, what actually was taking place, and we'll start at about verse 5, and there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. So all the Jews would have been coming together to partake of this feast, that's why they're there. Now, when this noise was abroad, uh, when this was noise abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. So again, pointing to what we were talking about last night, you know, we're talking about now, what is a miracle? Well, what is a tongue in the Bible? What does it say in uh, verse 6? Every man heard them speak in his own language. Right. And if we go to a crowd of people and they're speaking in today's tongues, which is a whole bunch of hollering, no one's going to hear a language. Right. I mean, we'd go in and hear a whole bunch of noise that you would hear a child make. Uh, uh, one, one preacher has said before about speaking in tongues, he said, when I, when I see someone up there, they're just you know, shouting all kinds of things, I just think you need to put a bib on them just like a child because they're just spitting and hollering everywhere just like a child right. would. Uh, verse 7, And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born? And he just said in verse 6 what a tongue was. They were hearing their own language. They knew that these people were Galileans, right. that they hadn't studied these languages, but yet somehow they got to hear each other in their own tongue. Can I, can I go to Acts 4 and verse 13 just to show you uh, what they would think of Galileans? Acts 4 13, the Bible says that when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived they were unlearned and ignorant men. So obviously these people were not schooled. They were not right. educated in the sense like, like Paul was set at the feet of Gamaliel. You know, he was a doctor of the law. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, uh, highly educated. The, these people were not that. Yeah. And so they knew that. They, they knew that. But yet, here they were speaking in these, in these tongues or these languages that obviously they had, they had never learned. Yeah, and I mean, you, I mean, that's a good point that I hadn't even made note of, and I'll remember to write that down. But, you know, how many of them were fishermen? And even about, about Jesus Christ, they said, isn't this the carpenter's mm -hmm. son? You know? That's the point they're making. Aren't these Galileans who haven't studied these languages? Uh, all the language that there, languages there, Parthenians and Medes and Elamites, dwellers in Mesopotamia, in Judea, Cappadocia, and Pontus, in Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, and Egypt, and in the parts of Libya about Cyrene, and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful word, works of God. And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, What meaneth this? Again, just as we had said about the Jews in John uh, 5, knowing that the lame man had been healed, in verse 11, we do hear them speak in our own tongues the wonderful works of God. They're acknowledging right. this is something from God. I mean, how can we hear uh, 12 men that are from Galilee speaking in about at least 16 different languages? Right. I mean, it, was, it was a miracle. You don't just, you know, I've, I uh, had two years of Spanish, but I don't just stand up and start spouting out French and someone know I haven't, take French, uh, haven't taken a French class. That's the miracle. Right. They knew these were not educated men in that sense. And another thing too, Caleb, and, and we were talking about this earlier, this is the, why, folks, it's important that you study and you realize the, the importance of, say, the book of Acts. You know, a lot of times you'll hear your Baptist friends or neighbors or your preacher say Acts is a transitional book. Mm -hmm. in, in the Bible, one of the Bible studies we had uh, this past week, the, the young man actually said that, well, Acts is a transitional book. Well, 
if you think that, you'll miss a whole lot. In the book of Acts, for example, if you don't, if you don't understand that Acts 2 is actually telling you what tongues are, and it says there, like verse 6, it says our, our language, and in verse 7 it says tongues. Mm -hmm. is telling you what tongues are, tongues right. are languages. If you miss that, then when you get over to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, you start hearing these people speaking in tongues or unknown tongues or mm -hmm. unlearned tongues, then you're going to go, oh, you know, you'll, no telling what, you'll define those as because you missed the definition way back here. Right. And it's kind of like watching a movie or reading a book. If you, if you go right to the middle, you don't know who the characters are. Mm -hmm. You don't know what's going on, what the plot is, but if you start at the beginning, you'll uh, actually get some education and some understanding about, hey, this is what's going on. So that's why, you know, folks, we say the whole Bible, you have to take everything in context right. in order to find the, the true meaning mm -hmm. of, of what's going on. And, I mean, we discussed it on the right over here. There's, I mean, if you don't pay attention to the Old Testament and certain different things, there's so much you could miss. But, I mean, if you don't take the time to, to read this and you just listen to your pastor tell you about it, I mean, you're going to be confused. Right. But if you just take the time, and that's really uh, really what I love about the Bible. Um, another thing we're going to get to in a little bit that I read before we came up here, it was just a verse that I had read before, and then I looked at it again, I thought, wow, I didn't even think about that. There's so much that we could gain from just studying it on our own. Don't let somebody just tell you something. Go ahead and, ha go ahead and actually study it. Look for it into yourself uh, and just study the uh, Word of God. If it's not, you know, a donkey speaking to us, if it's not the sun moving before our eyes, if it's not speaking in 16 different languages or healing a lame man, how about striking a man blind? I mean, it doesn't get more obvious and more right. real for a person right. if I can't see anymore. Uh, I'm try I can't remember the man who it was that said uh, they were going to strike Dad blind. If you remember that years ago, uh, they oh, said that was Brian Brown. Yeah, saying they were going to strike. Yeah. Well, he said Brian Brown said that if uh, what was it? Uh, uh, he just said let it be. You know, let, oh, let, yeah. let Johnny be blind. So, which was basically, you know, he was saying that was the mm -hmm. case. But yeah, that's been. We actually did. A, I remember one time I did a show on that and just said, you know, it's been two years and six months or whatever, so yeah. we're, you know, still waiting for the... Well, I remember Dad walking with a, for a picture, <laughs> with a stick, a walking stick. But striking a man blind, you know, this was, and really, what James said a moment ago, if you really had the power, if your pastor really had the power to, to do miracles, why not come to the tent, show it to us, and we'll be believers with you? Why not go ahead and just make it known for everybody instead of keeping it secret? Right. But this is on the other hand. For a man that was trying to hinder the gospel, trying to keep it from being preached, what happened? Uh, Acts 13, verse 11, it says, Now behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thee, and thou shalt be blind, uh, not seeing the sun for a season. And immediately there fell on him amidst uh, a darkness, and he went about seeking some to lead him by hand. So when someone was trying to keep the Apostle Paul from teaching the gospel, his name was Elymas, trying to keep him from teaching the gospel, I mean, this was... How many people have we run into today, James, that say, you know, I'm apostle so-and-so, and then we say, well, if you're not, you haven't been with Christ from the beginning and seen his, right. his works and his resurrection, right. you're not an apostle. Strike us blind and just be done with us. Right. Get it over with. Let it be out there in the street wondering, you yeah, know. Yeah, having someone lead us. Yeah. But instead, here it is, right there before us. You know, the apostles didn't wait around. There was no right. going to the doctor. When someone questioned uh, their authority and what they were teaching, they came in and they uh, struck him blind. And we have a phone call if you want to go ahead and start taking All calls. Right. All right. Yeah, let's do that. You want a word from the Lord? James. Yeah. This is Troy Coates in East Texas. How you doing? How you doing fine, Troy? All right. Hey, I, I, I got a couple of statements. Number one, uh, it's good to see Caleb. He's coming along. He's, he's learning. He's doing good. And, man, we, we appreciate y'all teaching truth. Well, thank you. We appreciate the phone uh, call and the comment. You bet, you bet. Listen, we're, we're trying to learn from y'all, man. Hey, and if if the miracles, such as speaking in tongues and, and and such in the first century was for to confirm that the person was from God and the and the message was from God, in Acts two, isn't that showing us that, that the miracles that happened there was for a reason, and it was to show that that's when the first true church was established and the only church? Isn't that the case? Mm -hmm. Yeah, all miracles. 
And this is this is th one of those things that people miss, you know, early on. It's like we said, all miracles were were designed to confirm the word. The word hadn't been written yet, you know. The 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 New Testament hadn't been written. It was still in uh, uh, a human form, if you will. Mm -hmm. Paul said, "We have this treasure in earthen vessels." Uh, I believe that's talking about the apostles. And then in Second Thessalonians two, uh, verse um, uh, fourteen and uh, fifteen, he says. Uh, I think it's verse 15. Second Thessalonians 2, 15. Therefore, brethren, stand fast in the whole traditions which ye have been taught, whether by our word or our epistle. So now, it's, you know, part of it's in written form, part mm -hmm. of it's in verbal form. But once, but uh, finally, at some point, it's going to all be in word form. It's all going to be epistles. Mm -hmm. It's all going to be written down. And so, and when that's done, there's no more need for the for the miracle. So, yeah, people people miss that, and then they, like I said. If you miss the way, point way over here, then you're going to be in trouble way over there when you get to the end of the, end of the book. Now, what, what shouldn't that be a warning to, to anyone that's in any church to look back and see when their church was established? It seems like nobody ever wants to talk about that, and, and I, it's hid. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, the Pentecostals will say that their church started with the with a, with a, uh, uh, outpouring of the Holy Spirit, you know, but that was in, uh, in what, the early 1900s, 19... 18 or no, when was that? Azusa Street, uh, not even then, but even then, you know, 2,000 years too late, you know, so. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, and if you really get to looking at it, and I, and I have looked at this psalm, um, if, I'm, if, I, if my studies, what I've looked at my, is correct, uh, most all the churches except for one was started from 1,500 on. And so what does that say about them? And the only one left before that would be the Roman Catholic Church, and it was. Uh, you know, what, some five, six hundred years after the Acts 2, so that's something we don't really need to think about. Right, right. Yeah. I appreciate y'all. Y'all done good, man. All right, thank, thank you. you. I like what Brother Melvin Sapp said in, in the tent one night. He's talking about people that uh, whose churches aren't in the, in the, in the Bible. He said they, they're too late for the press, you mm -hmm. know. The book was already <laughs> written. Yeah. You know, the Lord's church was, was, in, was in print, was mm -hmm. talked about. All the churches are too late for the press. Right. And one thing that he made a point to, uh, the purpose of miracles were to approve the, approve the messenger. And we're going to get in that to a little bit. And we're almost done defining what a miracle is. Uh, but striking a man blind, you know, either prove that you've got the ability to do it by performing a miracle and healing someone before us, or go ahead and strike us blind. Either way, there's going to have to be some activity on the, the pastors that are claiming to have mm -hmm. this gift. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you've got it, then use it. If not, why have it? Because we're not seeing any of it. The right. world isn't seeing any of it. And I don't ever read of the apostles keeping their spiritual gifts within four walls. Right. You know, they took the gospel all over. So well, now, can I just make a point about the next verse? Acts 13, oh, yeah. verse 12 says, Then the deputy, when he saw that was done, believed, being astonished at the doctrine of the Lord. So the miracles were always in connection with the doctrine, right. you know, confirming the word, mm -hmm. which is what we've been saying. So if what we're saying or what you're saying, you people that claim to have these miraculous gifts, if what you're saying is true, then demonstrate it in connection with what you're preaching. Right. We never see that happening either. Exactly. And making that point that the miracles always went with the word, you know, for those to say that we're wrong, that, you know, they, you know, people will say we're going to hell, then help us. Yeah. <laughs> Save us somehow. Right. Uh, but striking man blind. So what is a miracle? Uh, we've got another phone call. All right. Well, we can just take it real quick. All right. You want to work from the Lord? Yes. Uh, Yes, one one thing I noticed uh, with the prophets out here now, the, the one miracle that I see is how they able to exist to keep getting money from people, uh, saying they're healing them and everything. I mean, that's all they want to do is try to get money mailed into them. They they going to say a miracle prayer for them and guarantee their funds ten times fold back to them within such amount of time and and yeah that's exactly right miracle oil and all this other stuff and you know with what you're saying and that's the exact truth some people don't like to hear that you know false teachers are just in it for the money but they say I mean they tell people send us your money we'll heal you uh, your riches will be doubled but if you read in 2nd Peter 2 verses 1 through 3 uh, he writes, But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, 
who privilege shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring unto themselves swift destruction, and many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom they, the way of truth shall be evil spoken of, and through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you. Now what is that talking about? That's saying with their, you know, with their false doctrines, they're called false prophets, they're going to make merchandise of you, they're going to be taking your money. Mm -hmm. And they're going to be making money off of you with what they were doing, what their uh, pernicious ways and false doctrines were. So what you're saying now, sir, I mean, as, as he wrote it in 2 Peter 2, verse 1, I mean, it's still happening today. People are still just taking money. Exactly. Well, y'all have a good night, Kate. Yes, All sir. Right. You too. Thank right. you. Thank you. So we're asking the question now. We've seen the examples of... Uh, what what is a miracle? So now we've seen these examples. There's no doubt. I mean, you can't doubt your donkey just spoke to you. Right. You can't doubt uh, a man 38 years lame getting up and walking, and you can't doubt being struck blind. What is a miracle? Well, we're given the examples. Well, maybe you want just a, a better definition. Dictionary.com says it's an effect of extra effect or or extraordinary, even in the physical world that surpasses all known human or natural powers and is ascribed to supernatural cause. And then also Vine's Bible Dictionary, uh, one of the Greek words for miracles, dunamis, is power or ability produced by supernatural origin such as could not be produced by natural agents or means. Now that's what we've been saying all night. That's right. the, what the examples are saying. I mean, none of us could make the sun go back right. 10 degrees. Uh, I mean, if you're going to heal somebody and raise them from the dead, that's got to be of God, and that's what they right. gave credit to in the Bible. And that's what Nicodemus said to Jesus in John 3. He said, we know that our teacher come from God. No man can do these miracles except God be with him. Right. And Jesus, uh, Peter said about Jesus, he was a man approved of by God. Mm -hmm. How? How did God show his approval of, of Jesus? By signs and wonders. By signs and wonders, Acts 2, 22. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's really what we're what we're talking about here so it's got to be it's got to be superhuman supernatural mm -hmm. you know it's it's got to be behind beyond an own person's means you know we can't do it of ourself you know but a, a pastor gets up and he gets himself you know juiced up and going and he's excited about it well that's not anything of god going through him right. so it's above natural means well now what is the purpose of a miracle we've got the example we know what the definition is now what's the purpose of a miracle well, our past caller just gave it to us to confirm the message was from God. In Mark 16, 15 through 20, here we see the apostles giving their, getting their great commission from Christ and what he says to them and what the purpose of miracles is going to be. Mark 16, 15 through 20. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, and he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. And again, that would be new to them. You know, right. there's something, they didn't, something the they didn't know. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached every word, everywhere the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. Now, what's the purpose of miracles for the apostles to be doing them? To confirm the message they were teaching. Right. And then also, one quick point that we'll make here. Look at the whole list of miracles besides new tongues. The whole list that's given. Uh, In my name they shall cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, I shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. I said to Mark last night, how many snake handlers have we seen die? Mm -hmm. I mean, they, you know, they get bit and they say, well, God's going to take care of me. We're not in that age anymore. Right. So, I mean, you just see it taking place all over the place. But these are signs and wonders used to confirm the message they were teaching because they were fixing to come in. I mean, John the Baptist, Christ, and the apostles had been teaching the kingdom is at hand. You know, the change is coming from the law of mm -hmm. Moses. Well, none of these Jews are just going to accept that. Right. You know, we're not going to let 12 men come in and say, now our whole law is done away yeah, with. That they've, been, that they've been holding on to for 1,500 years. Exactly. Yeah. You know, you're not going to just come in and say, well, you know, the, the people, our fathers that came before us, it's done yeah. away with just like that. No, they had to have signs that approved, just as James read a moment ago, Acts 22, or Acts 2, verse 22. It tells us how Christ was approved. Uh, it says in Acts 2, 22, Ye men of Israel, 
<clears throat> hear these words, Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles, wonders, and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know. What was the whole point of Christ coming and doing miracles? To prove that he was the Son of God. What was the point of the apostles doing miracles? To prove that they were of God. And here's Mark 16 again. We just read that. But the Jews, <coughs> when they read this, or when they saw these signs happening, they knew it was of God. We read this a bit earlier. Uh, and they heard them in their tongues, and they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, what meaneth this? Well, I don't think we did read this part. Oh, I guess uh, I was just misreading. We do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. They knew it was of God. These signs were working their purpose. They were coming in. They were teaching a new message. How is it that uh, Peter knew God approved to teach Gentiles? Because up until Acts 10, they hadn't been taught the gospel. Right. But then you look at Acts 10, 14. Peter's receiving his vision, and he's saying that he hasn't eaten anything unclean. And, and now God is saying that it's going to be clean. But Peter said, Not so, Lord, for I have not eaten anything that is common or clean. And then he says, uh, What I have called clean, thou shalt not call common. And then you go down to Acts 10, 45 and 46. Now Peter is actually with Cornelius. And it says, And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out of the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak with the tongues and magnified God. And then answered Peter, and he commanded them to be baptized. So what's this mean now? You know, you've got signs and wonders. Well, now someone's getting the sign and wonder that isn't even a Christian. Right. What's the purpose of it? Well, it's going to be the same thing that was happening with Christ and with the apostles. And then you go into chapter 11 where Peter's now having to defend what he was doing, teaching Gentiles. They were asking him, how is it you went into the, those uncircumcised? And at chapter 11, verse 16, Then remembered I the word of the Lord, how that he said, John indeed baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. And chapter, uh, verse 17, for, for as much then as God gave them the gift, like as he did us unto us who believed on the Lord Christ. Now he's saying, God poured out the Holy Spirit that they spoke tongues just like he did on the apostles on the day of Pentecost. Now Peter's saying, what was I? Was I just going to you know, not teach them now that God's mm -hmm. done that? Peter knew what the purpose was. They had a gift. Well, God is now approving them just as he did Christ, right. approved before all men by signs and wonders. The apostles came in, were approved by signs and wonders. Now the Gentiles are being able to, talk, be, able to be taught by signs and wonders. This was the purpose of miracles, friends. It was so that we could get the word out so the apostles could spread the word effectively. Now we've got it. They, all right. they had was you know, word of mouth. They came in and by revelation spoke it to people. You know, they couldn't just say, well, here, James, read it for yourself. So what's, what would be the purpose of a miracle today then? See, I'm, I mean, if the purpose of the miracle was to confirm the word that had not yet been written, why would you need a miracle today? You know, I actually asked a girl I used to work with one time, I asked her, I said, well, you know, well, do you need a miracle then to, to verify your faith? And she said, yeah. And I said, well, you must have a weak faith. Mm -hmm. Cause the Bible says faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. So what she needed was she needed to hear the word of God, but you know, she needed the miracle to confirm that that was the word of God. Right. And that's, I mean, we heard it tonight in the lesson before we came over here, rich man and Lazarus. Right. You know, send Lazarus back for one of my five brethren. And Abraham said, they have Moses and the prophets. Right. So if you're going to flat out ignore the word of God, a miracle isn't even going to help you. Right. I mean, you're just, you're just without hope then at that <clears> point. <throat> if you can't take what we've got today, what God's given us, and there's no hope for it. Right. A miracle's not going to do it. Uh, we've had this call for quite a bit if you want to take it now. Thanks for waiting. You're on the Word from the Lord. How you doing, James? How you doing, Kevin? Fine. I'm doing all right. How are you? Good. Uh, I, the last caller um, brought something to my mind because you guys know I used to be involved in believing in miracles of today and people that had the Holy Spirit could heal and when I was involved in those type of, I guess you would call them worship ceremonies, it seemed that they would always have musical instruments and they would always take up a collection. Is there any case where a miracle was performed in the Bible where they were playing music or taking up a collection afterwards? Uh, not that I can think of. Well, it's actually, uh, it's actually the exact opposite of money being taken up. 
Peter and John, the man was asking for money. Acts 3. The man outside the temple who was lame. Uh, chapter 3 of Acts, verse 2. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. So he's asking money of people as they go in. Who suing, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple asked an alms, and Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us, and gave heed unto them, of, uh, expecting to receive something of them. And then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise and walk. So here you've got an apostle saying, I'm not going to give you money, but I've got something right. better. You know, th then he didn't heal him and say, Now give me what you've got. Right. Because he's already been there collecting alms. That's right. And actually... Uh, if you'll notice this too, then he leaping up stood and walked and entered, entered with them into the temple, walking, leaping, and praising God. So they were, he's actually, number one, he was, he was not, the money was not taken up. There was a healing. Mm -hmm. Money was not taken up. And then he went in to worship God. All this hooping and hollering and shouting and jumping around yeah. wasn't, wasn't, wasn't done in, yeah. in the worship. You mm -hmm. know, let's go heal somebody and then go to worship. You right. Know? It, and, I mean, we've seen it all today with people jumping over pews. I remember Dad played a video from someone right. in Texas, uh, you know, some denomination out there where they were tackling people. Yeah. It, that's not in the Bible, friends. I mean, here we've just shown where it's the exact opposite. No exactly. money taken up. He actually told him, I don't have money, but I've got something better. And that ought to really just show uh, denominations today. He said something better than money. Well, they've got it. You know, supposedly they've got it today, mm -hmm. but what are they interested in? Yeah. Money, money, money. I'm sure both of you have, are familiar with like Jesse Duplantis or uh, Benny Hinn or the Krauts and all these people mm -hmm. uh, who fill stadiums and and pass, you know, the plate around. Oh yeah. And right. Sometimes they even charge to get in. Really? Now I I wouldn't have thought of that. Charging to get into church, you know, coming charging to get in and then taking up a collection. Well, in some cases, I'm not saying those particular, right. you know, not Benny Hinn or, or Duplantis. I mean, they've, right. uh, whenever I've been to those, they've taken up collection. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, some other places even charge <laughs> tickets to get into some right. of these affairs, and it seems like they're always playing music. And, uh, you That's know, I mean, all the healings that I know of in, in the Bible, they took place in public, not in where, you know, they right. went to the people for the most part. Yeah, they didn't have healing services in the Bible. Yeah. You know, right. Jesus didn't say, you know, bring all your sick over here to, you know, Simon's house. I'm uh -huh. going to be here on the third Saturday yeah. of after the after the blue moon or mm -hmm. whatever. Uh, now they you. did they did bring lame people to mm -hmm. where Jesus was, but, but not because not because he advertised yeah. it. Yeah. So, all right. Thanks for your call. Yeah, thank you. Well, that's the next call coming. All right. Yeah, so, I mean, we're seeing the exact opposite today. One, it wasn't advertised. This is the healing day. If it was going to happen, it just happened right. immediately. And they didn't take up money, friends. I mean, we, we do this. We didn't pass the plate once at the tent. We don't come on TV and ask for money. I don't understand why people are so mad at us right. when, you know, there are people, there's a man that uh, had visited with us before that told Dad, when I was sick from where I went to church and I missed my tithe, they sent me the tithe envelope in the mail making sure they got it. We're not doing that with y'all. Why didn't they come around and heal him when he was sick? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Then he probably would have gladly given mm -hmm. the tithe, you know? It's, it's completely backwards, friends, and we're trying to help you out by showing in the Bible how we're going to get back away from this. Because, I mean, just as we read in Second Peter 2, they're making merchandise, merchandise mm -hmm. out of everybody. I was just thinking, Caleb, but, uh, you know, I go to the doctor, pay a copay or whatever, pay an office visit mm -hmm. so that I can be healed. If all these people who claim that they can heal, you know, yet they they don't heal, but then they make sure they get their copay, you right? Know, they, get, they get their they get their money. Exactly. So, you know, I just soon go to the doctor because you're you risking know, it going yeah. into a faith healer. Yeah. But uh, they'll just take my money and not get anything. So, but we're seeing, you know, we saw the the definition of miracles. We've seen the purpose of miracles to to uh, confirm the word to show God's approval on a matter. So now here we are at the point. Are miracles happening today? Are we, well, just ask you the question. Have you seen any of the biblical examples that we've talked about tonight? Have you seen animals speak, the day, uh, day stand still or go backwards, water to wine, people for 38 years been lame? Have you seen these type of things? I don't think you have. 
fact, I know you have it because I've never seen one type of thing like that in my life. I just turned 20 the other day. I've had plenty of time to see right. miracles, right. but I, I just can't see them because they're not <clears throat> happening today. And you've actually lived in a third world country where, you know, that's where most things happen, you know. Right. You're over here, well, over here in the, the third world country, you know, over here in Africa, mm -hmm. over here in, you know, the back, the uh, the outback of Australia somewhere. So, I mean, that's where they seem to all well, be happening, you know. They did. In fact, uh, where we lived, they had a, a Pentecostal church, and they all believed in, you know, I can remember them saying, jump like you did at Pentecost, and they were real big into it. But a bunch of them were walking around with, uh, is it measles that you get on your skin? I guess. Okay, well, they had something, all of them, at just one time, they all had these boils. No one had been healed. Are miracles happening today? No, they're not happening today. They were for a purpose and a certain time in the first century, and 1 Corinthians 13 tells us that they've gone away. Uh, 1 Corinthians 13, verses 8 through 10, it says, Charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Now, it can't get any more clear than that, James. Right. If there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part shall be done away. So here, when that which is perfect, and he's talking about the knowledge, for we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when that which is, when he's talking about part, when that is complete, is come, all that's going to be done away right. with. And we've got it, friends. We've got the complete Word of God. And there's nothing that's going to be missing in here. And so why do you need miracles? Because we read a moment ago when we talked about uh, Rich Man and Lazarus, you don't, you know, if you don't uh, obey the Word of God, a miracle isn't going to help you. So why do we need miracles in? We talked about this last night, Second Peter 1, 3. According as His divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. We have all things pertaining to life and godliness. Why do I need you to come and, you know, try to perform a miracle so that right. I can believe? I have it right before me. If I don't believe it, then that's on my heart. That's, you know, that's my insincerity, as we heard about tonight. Mm -hmm. So why do, you, why do you think people didn't want miracles? I mean, why do they want speaking in tongues? Or why do they, why do they want to... Uh, believe that these things still happen today well for what my you, you know my thought is they're not studying because if you would study and you'd see what was what was being pointed to you know and i mean even if you don't understand that at the the latter verse that we read the latter part of that verse uh, when that which is perfect has come i mean even if you didn't understand that that's talking about the word of god you'd plainly see that tongues are going to be done away right. with at some point well whatever the part is has to has to look like the perfect mm -hmm. You know, the perfect or the complete. So whatever the part is, it has to look like the, like the, like the complete. Right. And, I, and, and again, this is just like the Bible study we had with this young man uh, the other day. You know, he brought this verse, and I said, well, you know, if you have, if you have auto parts spread out on your yard and you put them all together, it's going to look like a car. Mm -hmm. You know, because they all belong to a car. Right. You know, they all belong to a vehicle. So if you put them all together, that's what the parts are going to look like the whole. Mm -hmm. Or if you have a piece of cake, and, and I said, and I go in the kitchen and find what this goes to. You know, what is this a piece of? What is right. it a part of? You're not going to say, well, here's a pie. No, it's a cake. Mm -hmm. So you know it's going to look like the rest of the, of the, the whole, mm -hmm. you know. And so whatever was in part was prophecy, knowledge, you know, these miraculous mm -hmm. gifts. And what were they used for? To, to dispense the Word of God. Right. So whatever the part was has to look like the whole. Mm -hmm. And that's the Word of God. Exactly. And, I mean, even with that illustration talking about, you know, you see a part of something and you, it has to look like the whole, the, you know, the so-called part that we have today, in today's world, it right. doesn't even look like, right. you know, what had been in the first century. Right. Oh, I mean, we're studying this tonight and we're seeing it's the exact opposite. And they want to say the perfect or the, the, the complete is Jesus. Mm -hmm. Well, what, how is Jesus in part? <laughs> yeah. You know, what part of Jesus are, mm -hmm. do you have today? So that, yeah, and so, then also, I mean, you could turn that around. It says, when that which is perfect has come. I mean, if it's been in part, well, hasn't he been perfect before then when right. he was here first? Right. I mean, so you could catch flaws all through that. But friends, these things are not here today, and this is what we have. This is what you need to be worried about. Don't look for some type of sign or miracle. 2 Timothy 3.16 says the same thing, that all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine for reproof, for correction, and instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished into all good works. We have it for reproof, for correction, 
uh, for doctrine, we can know how to please God. For proof and correction, we can know when something is wrong in God's eyes. And then instruction in righteousness, we can again know how to please God, that we may be thoroughly furnished into all good works. So I don't need miracles anymore. James doesn't need a miracle. James can study the Bible, and we can continue to study it, and we can help those that have not studied it before come to the knowledge of Christ. Yeah. I think people. I think people want these miracles, Caleb. I think they want them to be any good, to exist because they're looking for something spiritual. They know that there's something greater than them, and they're looking for it. But like you said, they haven't studied, mm -hmm. so they don't know what God says about it. And so that's the, the kind of the easy way. That's the, uh, yeah, the shortcut to spirituality is you know oh, I've got a miraculous gift. I feel good, mm -hmm. so therefore you know I'm, I'm right with God. No, friends. That, that's you know that's a shortcut that's a cheating shortcut and it doesn't really get you where you want to go anyway right. so and I mean you're saying there's something greater obviously there's something greater than this world and where we are now well we know no one's seen a miracle today so right. why not go to what you can actually get real hope from mm -hmm. which is the Bible we'll but, call yeah, we can, we go. We we can take this call four minutes. you're on the word from the Lord praise the Lord how are you doing tonight alright a little sleepy <laughs> Uh, how about you give me a little feedback on uh, the scripture about when we moan and groan in the spirit and all? Okay. Acts, Acts I mean, uh, Romans 8. Yeah, give me a little feedback on that. I okay. appreciate it. Did we see you at the 10 tonight, didn't we? Yeah, uh-huh. Oops. Yeah, uh-huh. All right. Yeah, I was, I was glad to see you come in. Yeah, I like trying what to get the word Kevin? and learn all I can. Uh, Do you say is it Romans eight twenty six? Okay, I appreciate it. Oh, Have a right. good night. All right, thank you. I'm, 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 yeah, it is. Is it? It is eight twenty six. Back up. Uh, no, that's fine. All right. Likewise, the Spirit also will help with our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit. Itself make up the intercession. Uh, whoops, you may have to read that. Uh, but the Spirit make it itself make it the intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. All right. And do you want to keep reading, or do you yeah, want to take that? I, I believe that just kind of we're running short of time, but I think maybe the simple uh, explanation of this is, you know, the Spirit does not have to be on Earth. You know, we don't have to have the Spirit to do something for us. Mm -hmm. I think there's a difference that the Spirit does something for us as opposed to the Spirit doing something to us. You know, I say, well, people say, I, well, I've got the Spirit and this is what he does. Mm -hmm. Well, we know that the Spirit can do something for us, make intercession for us, but that doesn't mean he has to be here, you know, literally indwelling us right. in order to do that. Mm -hmm. Jesus makes intercession for us. He's not here bodily or literally. So, right. so uh, but also, too, in the time when this is being uh, written, you know, all revelation wasn't uh, being given. So how do you know what to pray? Because that's what the uh, that's what the context says. Uh, I believe verse twenty-six. Let me see. Make an intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Uh, verse twenty-seven. Uh, and he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the spirit, because he maketh an intercession for the saints according to the will of God. I, I think the whole point is that. You know, until you know the will of God or know how to pray or what to pray for, there was a time when they needed some uh, supernatural guidance. Mm -hmm. I mean, Paul wanted to impart some spiritual gift to these people. Uh, Romans 1, verse 11, he wanted to give them something to, to edify the church, which is what the miraculous gifts were all mm -hmm. for, 1 Corinthians 14. All through 1 Corinthians 14, he says, you know, let all things be done to edifying, to build up. So there was a time when this was needed, these supernatural gifts were needed, to edify the church, to maybe to teach you how to pray or what to, or for what to pray. Mm -hmm. But now that miracle's over today, whatever the Spirit is doing for us, He's doing it from the capacity in heaven. He's not doing it literally acting here on earth. Now, I, I hope that helped answer the question. Mm -hmm. I, I, well, that's kind I, of the, I think she's gone. Reader's but Digest I, yeah. condensed version. Uh, well... Uh, we're running out of time, but friends, tonight we hope we, that we have helped you uh, with the miracles at some point to, in all of what we've been discussing. But one more question before we go. Uh, look at 1 Corinthians 12, 4. Now there are diversity of gifts, but the same Spirit. Can I ask you the question, why speaking in tongues? 
there were so many other gifts that they, that they had done, working of miracles. Why are we so focused on that today? And friends, when you're in, at your worship services and you're with your pastor, ask him if he can really do miracles and that you want to see a miracle the way that they showed in the Bible that is beyond natural law, something that is obviously from God. Right. Because we've got to have proof because this is what we're going by today. And if we've got miracles going on, this is worthless. Right. I mean, if we've got something that's still above that, that's coming from God, we need to all be a part of it. Well, I'll say this too, Caleb. You know, the idea of uh, instead of asking for speaking in tongues or speaking in tongues, why not Why not the rest of them? You mm -hmm. know, if speaking in tongues is still for today, then there's, there's eight more in there that need yeah. to be demonstrated as well. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're looking for. So... Uh, I think we're, are we out of time? Out of time. So thanks for watching, friends. We, sorry you missed the tent, but we'll be back on Sunday nights at a regular time, 9 o'clock. Thursday nights at 8 o'clock. What does the Bible say? Thursday nights at 9 o'clock for a word from the Lord. So, Caleb, enjoyed being on with you. Yes, I enjoyed Good it Good to see you back. Yeah, glad and, I got to be uh, here. Remember to ask, what does the Bible say? And you always get a word from the Lord. Have a good night. Thank you. year old Marshall Ecker died at his home on Thursday afternoon. According to the Pennsylvania County Sheriff's Office, they reported that it was just before 3 o'clock on Thursday afternoon that the county's 911 center received a call from a family member for rescue squad members to respond to Deer View Road in Gretna for a possible cardiac arrest. First responders did arrive a short time later and